Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Luis Rivera asked me to do a presentation on Val Valentino, the masked magician. Uh, this guy has caused so much controversy. Uh, some people hate the guy, some people love the guy, but he has caused a lot of controversy. Why? Because he allegedly reveals secrets. And he does so on national television. I've got my own personal stories about Val. I'll, I'll tell you those, uh, how he, his, his work has affected me or not affected me. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the things that he's revealed, though, i got to tell you, I mean, I, I'm a fan of the show. I'm a fan of the show because I enjoy watching. It seems to me that he'll, he'll present a, a standard illusion, but, but the secret that he reveals in, in many cases is not the standard secret. It's something that's innovative. I, I, case in point, I remember he revealed the dollhouse. Now, at the time, I was performing a dollhouse illusion. So he reveals it on the television. I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, and this has happened to me a couple times with Val. So I'll, I'll tell you those stories. But he reveals the dollhouse illusion. But the method, the method he used was not the traditional method. Uh, he used an entirely different method to produce the person, and when I saw him present it, I'm thinking, wait a minute, that's, that's different. And when I saw the method, I thought, you know, I kind of like that even better. So, the thing is, laymen will watch this stuff. It's just my own personal theory here. Laymen will watch this stuff and very quickly forget it. And I'm going to give you some examples. I mean, I was doing the dollhouse when he revealed it. I was doing the zigzag when he revealed it. I was doing the sub trunk when he revealed it. And in no case did, did a person say to me, oh, I saw that on the Mass Magician show. Oh, I know how you did that. You know, it wasn't that way. I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, Mike Caveney. Now, this, this book, I'm going to talk about these books in another video. These are the classic correspondence from the Egyptian Hall Museum. This is volume two. These are incredible. Uh, they're kind of pricey. I think they're like $75 a piece. There's four of them right now. But they are amazing. Just a fantastic walk through history. What you have in here are letters. Some letters were written by people that you may not know. Some letters were people written by very famous historical figures. Uh, they were written because back in these days, man, people wrote letters, right? They didn't send emails. They didn't send text messages. They wrote letters, and so you have this history in these letters. So Mike Caveney's done, I think, four volumes of these. I've got all four volumes. They're fantastic. I reference it because in volume two, page 92, Mike Caveney described Valentino as, and I quote, an infection like the Black Plague. End quote. An infection like the Black Plague. Now, exposure... If you ask, if, you know, nobody that does anything wrong will sit there and say, oh yeah, I did something wrong. Most of the time, they'll justify it somehow, some way. If you were to ask Val Valentino, why did you agree to do this? He would say, exposure creates interest in magic and it spurs innovation. That's what he would say. Yeah, so he would make it sound virtuous. But it also sends the wrong message about magic. And, and here, here's where the rubber meets the road, folks. If all we have are secrets, then, yeah, then absolutely, when somebody exposes those secrets, we're done, right? If that's all we have. The problem is this. Magic is not about see. It is to a certain extent. I mean, if everything were revealed, if everything were public knowledge, uh, obviously we, we'd have difficulty creating wonder. But magic is about creating wonder. It's about creating an experience. It's about the emotional involvement of the audience. You know, if what you do is present trick after trick after trick after trick, I don't think that's a good experience for your audience. The audience is seeing something that they might might found astounding. They might wonder about it. They might wonder how you did it. But it's not the experience you're after. The experience you want to create as a performer is an experience of wonder. It's an emotional experience. So you want to bring your audience in emotionally, 
you can do that with, with a tried and true secret that's been revealed because it becomes about the experience and not about the secret. I, so I, I think there's a, there's a problem that, that may be not be obvious. I think most of the people that are angry at Val are angry because he's revealed secrets. But the, the bigger problem is, that, is the suggestion that magic is a collection of secrets. And that all you need, and, and famous magicians, by the way, have said this on television. Magic is easy once you know the secret. Well, that's not true on a number of levels. Number one, you can know the secret to something, but still not know how to present it properly because it takes a lot of practice and rehearsal just to present it properly. So just knowing the secret is not it. And then number two, there's the presentational angle, which is the emotional hook that I'm referring to. And, and apart from that, I don't think magic actually exists. So, so the, the idea, the notion that, that if, if I know the secret, I understand magic, I think, I think laymen might actually believe this. And I think some magicians might actually believe this. But, but the reality is magic is about creating an experience. Now let me give you two examples of, of famous illusions that were exposed in history that became better because of the exposure. Number one was the vanishing birdcage. Uh, Harry Blackstone Sr. Was, was performing the vanishing birdcage. Originally, he would come out on stage, he would vanish the birdcage, he would walk off stage and come back with another birdcage, which was the same birdcage that he reproduced backstage. Uh, that's the way he was presenting it. And then I think it was in a in a cigarette ad, I think, a camel campaign. I'm not sure exactly. I think it's referenced in the classic correspondence. Anyway, he um, the the vanishing bird cage is actually exposed in the ad in a national campaign that he's currently doing. So here's what Blackstone does. Now this is what the Golden Age masters did, folks. He comes out and he says, I know that you've read about the vanishing birdcage. And I know that you read that it goes up my sleeve. But here's what I'm going to do. I want you to come up out of the audience. I want, I'm going to bring a committee up. And you're going to put your hands around the birdcage. You're going to put your hands on my arms. And it still vanishes. He innovated. He changed. He adapted. And the audience thought, hey, I read about the vanishing birdcage. But th that's not it. It can't be it. He's doing something entirely different because committee audience members had their hands all around it. That's what the masters did, folks. They adapted. Another good example is the sawing illusion. So the sawing illusion comes along 1920s, 1920, 1921. P.T. Selbit, he's sawing through, right? So Horace Goldwyn comes up with the idea of separating the two sides of the box. Ooh. And then somebody exposes that. So now what do you do? Well, over a period of time, peer exposures, you end up with the circular saw or the buzz saw illusion, which is the, 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 the woman is not in a box at all. And this huge circular saw goes right through her body. Then you have the thin model sawing. And, and later the, the crystal or, or the, um, I forget what the pen dragons called, they were the first to come out with it. The, the box that the thin model sawing sits on is completely transparent under the pen dragon presentation. So my point is you get innovation because of exposure that drives the effect forward and makes it better than it was. Now I'm not justifying what Val Valentino did. I'm not justifying the exposure of magic. All I'm saying is, it's going to happen, and when it does, we can adapt. Now, how did it affect me? As I mentioned, I was doing the dollhouse when it was revealed on television. I was doing the subtrunk when it was revealed on television. I was doing the zigzag when it was revealed. And every time I'd be sitting there, literally, I'd watch the mass magician. And I think, oh no, <clears throat> he's just revealed a trick that I'm supposed to do tomorrow night at the at the at <laughs> the American Legion Hall or wherever it was I was performing. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I, I was I was distressed. I was distressed because I thought that 
my audience had seen the same show. Thing is this, the general audience that, that I was performing for and that I continue to perform for don't have the interest in magic that I do. They were watching Three's Company or some other sitcom while I was watching The Masked Magician. They never saw it. And those that did see it, it didn't register the same. They, they might have seen it, they might have enjoyed it, they might have watched uh, and, and had pleasure watching at the moment, but they just didn't stick because they don't, they, don't have the, they don't have the emotional attachment to it that I do and maybe you do. They don't, they don't care, see? They don't care. Because they don't care, they're not, they're not emotionally invested, it doesn't stick in their memory. So I never, not once after he, and, and three times it happened to me, Dollhouse, Subtrump, Zigzag. Three times it happened. He exposed it. I had a show the next night or the, or the day after. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. Now, how do I feel about exposure? I agree with Mike Haveney. I, it just, it just, it, people should not be doing it for three reasons. Number one, most of us are members of the IBM or the SAM or both. When you join one of those organizations, you take an oath, you, take, you promise, you give your word that you will not expose. Your word needs to mean something. If, if you belong to these organizations, if you have promised, if you have put your word, if you have signed your name to that, then you don't do it because you, you promised. You don't do it. <clears throat> Number two, exposure damages the experience of wonder. I referred to this earlier. As magicians, our job isn't to present tricks. Our, as magicians, our job is to create the experience of wonder. And if, if the audience believes that magic boils down to a series of secrets, and if the, I understand the secrets that I can do magic, if the audience believes that, it, it's, it's damaging the credibility of magic as a performing art. So I, I don't like the idea of here, here's, here's how to do magic, here, here's the secret, now that you know the secret, that's it. That, 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 that does a serious injustice to the performing art of magic. Finally, finally, every, every trick was invented by someone. Somebody sat down at their table, at their desk, in their workshop, and they had an idea and they worked on that idea and they told oh, this won't work oh this won't work oh this finally works and they created this idea and, and so they bring their idea into physical reality now that that folks is intellectual property it belongs to the person who created it so people might say to me, well, why won't you tell me how it's done? Well, it's not my secret to reveal unless I created it. See, if, if I'm performing somebody else's invention, it belongs to somebody else. I, I can't reveal. I might have paid for it. I might have. Phil Thomas, one of my great mentors, Phil Thomas, used to say, you buy the secret, the prop is thrown in for free. Well, you do. You're paying for the intellectual rights to perform that particular effect that was developed by someone else's blood, sweat, and tears. So there's an intellectual property issue. That's why you don't reveal because it's not yours to reveal. Now, Val Valentino was born Leonard Monotono. Let me spell that for you. M-O-N-A-T-O-N-O. -O -O. Val Valentino. I like the sound of that. June 14. 1956, Los Angeles, California. In his teens, Valentino performed with the International Cultural Awareness Program. He revealed secrets even then, but he stated that the reason he did it was to encourage others to take up the art of magic. In the late 80s, Valentino moved to Las Vegas, where he performed in casino shows. Fox network approached him about doing the show which was called breaking the magician's code magic's biggest secrets finally revealed and he agreed to do the show the show ran from 1997 to 1998 did not have a long run but it's legendary 
It's legendary. People look back to that show. Oh, it was the mass magician. He exposed everything. He ruined everything. I don't think he ruined everything. I wouldn't have done it. I wish he hadn't done it. But I got to tell you, I've enjoyed the show. I really have. He's done some great stuff on that show. And he's done things and he's revealed things that are not the traditional methods. So, hey, Luis Rivera, thank you so much for asking. I'm glad that you did. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment down below. Please subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.